In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the analog discovery tool to generate a waveform and to display it on the oscilloscope. Here is the analog discovery tool. It's connected through a USB cable with the computer over here. And we're going to use the flywire assembly in order to um, measure the waveform and uh, output it from the waveform generator. I have labeled the different wires uh, according to their functions. And we are going to, as a first thing, plug that in. Uh, it needs a little bit of force. It's a 30 pin connector and it has to go all the way in. And then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the waveforms software where we can generate things. Right now what we are seeing is the scope. We want to start from actually using the waveform generator. So I'm going to click here on window and waveforms. And then I get to see the menu of the different uh, functions that the waveforms uh, software can do. So we're going to go to the wave again, the waveform generator. And we have a bunch of uh, possibilities here. Right now it's set for a square wave at 1 megahertz. I want to change that to make a sinusoidal waveform. So I'm changing it to sine. And then I'm going to make the frequency a little bit less than that. Let's make it one kilohertz. And so now it will produce a one kilohertz waveform that is symmetric around zero and goes from minus one all the way up to plus one because the amplitude is set to one. I'm going to shift that up by using an offset of one volt. And uh, that means that now the waveform is going to be all positive, starting from zero uh, over here, all the way up to plus one, uh, plus two actually, on the left side. So I can start that using the run button. And then I can go back to the oscilloscope and get that one to run. And we don't see anything yet because I have not connected the wire. So let's go back to the flywire assembly. And the first thing we need to know is that the inputs for the oscilloscope, they are actually differential inputs. So there is two wires here. You can see here a one minus and a one plus. And we need to connect both of those to get a, a good signal. So the one minus we're going to put to ground. So that's this black wire here with the little down arrow. And I'm going to just use a jumper wire here to connect this to the one minus wire. And then the one plus wire I'm going to connect to the output of the waveform generator. That's this uh, yellow wire here. It's labeled W1. So this is my waveform generator output and I'm connecting it here to the one plus. And now we can switch back to the waveform uh, software and we can see that we actually get to see a sinusoid. It is um, randomly going back and forth uh, because it's not triggered correctly at this point. The yellow arrow here on the right that actually shows where the trigger level is and it's right at zero volts and the waveform does not go below zero volts so it doesn't get any triggering. So we're going to change that and um, move the level here uh, to one volt for the trigger. Okay, so now the little arrow went up and we get this table picture. We can zoom in on it by choosing a different value for the uh, time base. Right now it's two milliseconds per division, so we get uh, with the one kilohertz waveform we get two periods per division. And I'm going to change that to something like maybe 200 microseconds per division. And so now you get to see nicely uh, the waveform that we are capturing here. Let's go back to maybe something like one uh, millisecond per division, so that we get one period per division. And then what we want to do is we want to make, 
make some measurements on the waveform. There's two uh, tabs for measurements here on top. One is for digital measurements and the other one is for analog measurements. Right now we want to do the analog measurements. And um, here is the add button where we can add things to the measurements. Uh, we are going to use defined measurements, predefined measurements. If we click on that, we get to see choice of channel one or channel two and then vertical and horizontal measurements. We're going to look at vertical measurements first. And we could look at the maximum of the measurement uh, of the waveform, the minimum of the waveform. And maybe let's take a look at the peak to peak voltage as well. And then we could take a look on the horizontal scale and measure the frequency and add this one. And when we close this, we should be able to see the measurements. Uh, as we would expect, the maximum is close to 2 volts. The minimum is a little bit below zero, something like minus 6 millivolts. The peak-to-peak -peak value is um, 2 volts, a little bit more than 2 volts. And of course, that's how we designed it. And then the frequency is uh, at 1 kilohertz. Something that you will often want to do for lab reports and so on is to actually export the picture that you're getting. So we click on export and then we get to see here either data um, or uh, like this one here. So that gives us actually some sample data. And then there is also the image that we can export and um, if we enlarge this a little bit, we should be able to see different things right now. It's um, not showing what I was actually expecting to see, which is an image of the oscilloscope. And I think the reason is that I had clicked here on measurements. I have to click back here on the oscilloscope and then use the export function. And then we can see uh, the picture that we're getting, you can see that it actually does capture <coughs> uh, the oscilloscope. It did not capture the measurements. So there is a way to actually do that too. Uh, so let's cancel this and let's um, go back in here and maybe um, what I will do is I will click here on the wave again and then go back to scope and see whether that gives me what I want. Okay, so let's take a look again what it has captured. And this time around it actually has captured what, all of the things that I wanted. So it has the picture here of the waveform. It has the uh, measurements that we made. And it also shows the settings that we used for making the measurement. And if I go down here, I get to see the bottom of it. So. We could either copy this to the clipboard and then put that into a report, or we could um, uh, save it in a file and then import the file in a report. I'm going to cancel that right now. And if you want to get rid of the measurements and see the whole waveform again, we can click here on measurements and then it goes back to the original uh, wide display. Okay, so. Um, what still needs to be done is um, we're going to take off the uh, flywire assembly just to uh, give a demonstration of how that works. So you have to hold all of the wires uh, together and then pull on it. Don't just pull on a single wire that might uh, damage it. And then you wiggle it back and forth and pull it out of that uh, 30 pin connector here. So that um, should probably give us uh, a good introduction to of how to use the uh, analog discovery tool uh, for just a simple measurement of a sinusoidal waveform.